Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video showing some of the latest stuff that's in that 3DXR up there in the northeast of England. Now I personally buy quite a bit from 3DXR and I was up there doing some work related stuff and Ben was talking about all of the new stuff that he'd had in since I last saw him back in probably November last year. Uh, so I said oh this is actually really good so I got him to lay it out on the table and we did a quick bit of video talking about it. So uh, put some time codes down below for the main pieces if you're interested. I'll put links down below as well for the stuff that he's talking around uh, but it's quite cool to see some of the latest and greatest toys that he has in and it's been a while since I've done one of these so there was certainly a lot to talk about. So Ben, before we get on to all of the really exciting stuff around the, around the side, all the individual components, uh, it looks like you've got a couple of new versions of something that I built last year. I'll put a link down in the description. What are these things? Because the one on the left looks very familiar to me. So this is the Hexoon 450. So we call this a, a reference frame, a, an educational drone. The idea is it gets you into the the open source of pilots and Articopter. Um, what we've done now is we have the new legs. So instead of a traditional uh, sort of T-shaped landing gear, we have the legs on each corner. So this just makes it so much more stable when landing on rough terrain. This is the next size up. So this was the 450. Yep. And this is the 650. There's also two more sizes. We have an 850 hexacopter and an 1100 quad, which is the, the super huge version with 30 inch propellers on. Uh, this one also comes with um, the four legs as well. So you can do either method, the traditional T-piece yep. and also the corner legs as well in the box with this particular one. So this is the, it's called a TD650. So the TD stands for teardrop and that has the shape of the arms, this unique profile. Well, it's nice to, it's nice to see the, uh, the one in the background because, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm glad it hasn't burst into flames because I have my hands on that. No, not yet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next um, thing then is in all the extra components, because you yeah. have a lot in here. And obviously, let's talk about carbon fiber, because yeah. carbon fiber uh, is one of those things that people get quite excited about. But actually, uh, there's a lot of good carbon fiber, but there's a lot more bad carbon fiber. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about that? Because you're now stocking well, yeah, so so, sheets and tubes of all various sizes and things. Yeah, aren't you? so it's something we've always used, we've always you know, make custom drones or modified drones so I've always needed um, carbon fiber for ourselves and it, it is hard to find a good supply um, or to have products made to your specification so what we have now and what we're offering for sale is what I think is the best um, generally we found matte finish is the best and um, so we have our tubes here as low as six millimeter and currently up to 40 millimeter out of diameter and we also have a range of wall thicknesses. So when you're looking, for example, for 30 millimeter tube, there's actually many types you can get. So we've got from a one millimeter, one and a half and two millimeter wall thicknesses. So you can choose the most appropriate strength for what you're uh, building. It is a uniform thickness. So when you are milling this stuff, you will, you will get the sort of dimensions and the, the effects you want. And it's double A side, if you like, so that they're all a, a heat pressed um, carbon fiber sheet and we always use a matte finish in the past I found whenever um, a glossy finish is available it's often a spray on lacquer and all that happens is you get an uneven Une surface uh, right. thickness and that's a problem with say tubes as well if, if if you have the type that is just a spray on lacquer you go to fit a t-brace for a leg a motor mount you end up scraping half of it off it's just not if you yeah. can stick with Matt <laughs> and um, at the moment what we've got here we've got from one mil uh, one and a half to all the way to five mil in this diameter and we have a few different sizes coming up so the one we're showing today is a 500 by 500 we also have smaller a4 size sheets for your desktop style CNC machines and some uh, longer sheets of 500 by 800 arriving in the next month or so next thing to talk about then on the bench are motors a subject that's very dear to my heart at the moment and lots of other people's now uh, just before uh, i hand over to you uh, on this bench uh, there are the two series from t-motor the as which is their new kind of value line uh, the as 1200 
uh, KV motor is the one that I put on the Vorticon 2 that I'm just replacing. And then you also have the AT series, which uh, is the, the, the one that most people are going to be familiar with. T motors do really nice motors, but you've also got Sunny Sky and some others on here as well. Yep. So you mentioned there about the AS series. So we have um, an AT series, a little bit more of a premium, and the AS series. So you'll see a few differences on here about the construction of the motor. Um, the AS series is something you should consider. It's competitively priced like the Sunny Sky motors. Um, but it gives you that uh, more premium quality, better bearing, stronger shafts. I was quite a fan of Sunny Sky, and I must admit, ha after having playing with this, the shafts are a millimetre wider, so they'll take a, a, a lot more damage Absolutely. than the Sunny Sky for the same size. Yeah. Uh, these are it's proven to be a very popular motor, um, and as well as the, the AT series as well. So this is a 2312. Now, when you're looking for a motor, it might give you a given uh, specification of motor, so... He was either 2312, so this is the 23mm um, width and a 12mm height. This will be suitable if you're told to use a 2212 of a Sunny Sky brand, so this is just... Um, and the same, for example, this one here, this is actually called a 2317, so this would be similar to a 2216. So right. it's, yeah, you could say it's a millimetre taller or a millimetre wider. Um, there would be no issues in using this motor where it told you to use a... 2216 it is you know nigh on the same the thing i like about t-motors is that they do list on the website all of the thrust data i have been choosing motors and props for models that i've been building is the thrust to weight as a as a you know fag packet way of choosing yep. i love this stuff because it actually gives you the detail in the bottom not only of the prop you need to use but also the thrust it's going to generate hurrah but also the amperage and the wattage it's going yep. to dissipate See my video on that. We're, we're, there's going to be another video that Ben and I are about to shoot after this one, actually, where we're going to put some of these motors through their paces. And, but there's also a couple at the back here, oh. these big guys, that have numbers on that I think is quite fascinating. Because one of the questions I get a lot, Ben, is yeah. guys coming from Glow yeah. and IC about what motor should I get to replace this particular engine. Okay. And that's something that can be tricky to, to answer. Um, well, let's look at this this nice motor here. <laughs> so, um, one of our last videos, we had the big 3-meter VTOL. Yeah. So, this, this is what's going to go on the back of that. Um, so, this is branded, it's a 30cc equivalent. So, there you go, that's it, the easiest way to see. If you're replacing um, a 30cc DLE engine or something, here is a, a direct replacement. Something like a, a 19 or 23 inch propeller on this. Uh, what I really like about this is it's a pancake motor as well, compared to the the longer body yeah, the version. Cam. So yeah. this, in my case, is to really help with my weight distribution. Um, and it's also turned out to be a lighter motor than alternative 30cc replacements. So that is a, that is, if motors could be pretty. It's nice, isn't it? A couple of mountain options. We do have the adapters to fit on a uh, propeller and spinner. Um, and even um, almost like the multi rotor style of mounting where we put a cap on it and a propeller. So a few different options here. But yeah, be beautifully crafted motor. Um, nice big shaft and solid bearing. So excellent um, yeah usual t motor stuff built like a tank yeah so this would be this is an 80 um and a 7215 there, there is a 40 cc equivalent on the way um and they're all available in about three or four different kvs so this particular one is a 220 um this would be used on 12s there is options for a 10 12 and in other sizes 6s so a, a lot of options for for your needs so this this follows the sort of naming convention of the motors before so in this case, this is the 3520. Um, so again, about 35 mm width, 20 height. Um, this is what I use on the believers. Right. Um, so the twin engine ones on 6S. What you'll see here, which isn't on all the motors, I've fitted the uh, prop adapter on here. So it has a long shaft out the back if you wanted to panel mount it. Yep. Um, or the normal method, which I use is we stick the spinner and propeller on the front. Yeah. The, double, the long shaft on this is just a pain in the butt, if you'll pardon the phrase, because <laughs> in the recent builds, I, when I mount them, I have to cut a recess with a shaft. Yeah. Now, uh, you mentioned that you might be getting in some ones that have a yeah. shorter shaft. So, th the long shaft allows you to use these motors in two ways. So, some traditional people will mount it and have 
the body turning on the back in free space and a, a grub screw holding on a prop adapter. Um, it's less and less common, but for a motor manufacturer, it gives you two options, the adapter on the front, I use the shaft. Um, we're having some custom made with short shafts in the common sizes here. Fantastic. So lots and lots of motors and uh, lots and lots of stuff in stock. So next thing to talk about then is another thing that's very close to my heart is our friend the servo. There's some servos on here that I'm very pleased you've got in because again these are things that are tricky to find and actually let's start with this little fella. So this little one here is very uh, similar to the ones that are used in the wings on things like ZOHD models. Uh, they are incredibly hard to find. If you find them anywhere they're usually from the Far East and you've got to wait three weeks to get hold of them uh, which is a pain in the butt if you manage to destroy one of these or damage one in the wing. Um, and it's uh, Emacs as well. This is the 9251. Now these were really hard to get hold of but this looks like it's a Mark II. Is that why I couldn't yeah, get hold of them? Yeah, potentially as a shift in model sometimes you see harder to get in the market. But yeah, now good flowing stocks of these here. Um, the smallest one, so this is branded as a 4 gram servo like you say yeah. for those smaller um, ZOHD drifts and similar models. Um, so for me, Max, we stock um, almost all of their products. And they're a fantastic servo. This is one of my favorite, you know, Metal Gears. Um, this is a 17 gram size. And when you need to be at the sort of 12 gram size, here's again another digital Metal Gear servo, just beautiful crafted. Um, one thing I'd like to show you today is um, we've been expanding our range of JX servos. Now, here's an example here. This is a 1109 Metal Gear. So this is quite similar to an Emax ES08. Um, and again, I mean, you know, nice quality, um, good, precise servo. This is one of their models that would be a standard size servo, but we've gone with all metal in this case. We also have these available in the standard amount of rotation, but also 180 degrees and even 360 degrees in this particular servo. A standard servo can be anything from like 70 to 120 degrees. Um, so yeah, having, having different amounts, 180 degrees or 360 can be useful. Um, you mentioned your pan and tilt, but also robotics. Um, that's quite a growing, course, um, yeah. growing hobby. I'll just show you these two first. We've also got uh, various high voltage ones, um, full metal casing ones. Some of the ranges are waterproof. And then also what you've seen here is um, the dual shaft ones. Now, this particular one is um, the second side is just a mounting point. It's not the right. shaft all the way through, but this allows you to accurately mount it. Um, and do your twisting operation. So this is a 180. Um, we also have 360s of the same version. And this is the, the sort of lightest duty one, if you like. Some of these go up to 30 and 40 kilos. This is um, this is an Emac servo. Um, this is what they call their budget servo. So they forgot to put their name on it. But it's the same. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that <can't> <laughs> <so>. <laughs> well, exactly, yeah, every penny counts. So um, this is a ES08 and then it's a E for economy. Yep. Um, Lots of people still ask, you know, about these cheap servers you'll get that were in the transparent blue case, so like the Tower Pro, you had a 50 and a 90. Um, you know, this is this is a replacement for those. Uh, it's better. Um, so, yeah, it just comes in the is bag it? with the fittings. Uh, so the next thing, I'm just conscious we've been going for a little while, uh, but I definitely want to talk about some of the things on the bench here. Now, you are one of the places that stock all the different kinds of connectors from a mass and loads of other things. Yeah. Um, can we just cover a, a couple of things out on here? I, I particularly want to have a look at these high voltage connectors at the back because yep. you're starting to get more of the XT60 and other style of connectors that have more than two pins. Um, yes, yeah, so what we have is a new range. These are actually um, uh, QS is the brand and we have starting at an 8, a 9 and a 10 and yeah. They have a 10 millimeter bullet inside essentially. Right. Um, so these are rated to about 300 amps. Um, and we have four pins that you could use for whatever you want. If it's signal pins, um, people using smart batteries for a CAN connection. But yeah, and all done with protective backs. <laughs> so it's nice and, and just neat. A, Yeah, very, very secure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a few different sizes. There's a nine, then there's the eight. Now an eight is kind um, it's kind of a beefier XT90. Yep. Uh, it's rated a little bit higher. So this is about the sort of 130 amp um, continuous current and anti-spark. So if you're building a big model, yep. you've got it covered. However, if you're building a smaller model and you need an extra pin or two, you've got this covered as well. So let's talk yeah. about some of this. We've got some new ones from Amas. 
So what we have is here is a XT60 with um, the extra pin. So this is a like a two plus one connector they call it. Right. Now at the moment what we've got in um, is a PCB mount on the other end, but there is more um, varieties coming. But this would allow you to, yeah, for example, you could have your ESC connected to this where you power and signal and use the common ground. Um, but yeah, just it potentially gets rid of an extra wire, an extra connector. Um, I like <laughs> the, the one here, this is the standard XT60, so no extra pin. It's just an alternative mounting method um, if you want to connect it down to something. Um, now, there's other little sneaky one you, you noticed. This is um, just coming out or just available in mass um, quantities. So this is an XT30 with two pins. Um, and the way you make this end up is it's crimp connectors. Um, for the for maybe your signals, but yeah, this this could be great on a little uh, little that wing. That would be great for a wing. Actually. Yeah, and again, a few different options on the other end if it's a PCB mount or if it's a standard standard method. I mean, what I recommend with these is these these are sold for a PCB mount. Um, you know, a lot of people are 3D printing parts now, so you could make your own casing or you could have this done in a way in a wing where okay, it's a PCB connector, but you managed to successfully connect to it. You made a nice pretty um, housing in your wing. So yeah, um, here's another way to mount connectors. So these are just a simple back plate for a 90 or a 60. And again, if you are wanting to affix the battery terminal, you could mount it to here and again, print a little housing and even screw this to there or to plate mount a connector. It just gives you some options. Um, another mass product, this is a SH8, so eight millimeter bullets. And the idea again, just for, for big batteries, this is a, um, locating connector for your heavy duty stuff um, what we have here is an XT34 uh, panel mounting so you could have a recess in your carbon plate and bolt this to it as a power takeoff and another variation on that um, for other mounting methods for, for panel mounting so thank you again to Ben uh, for hosting me on that day and going through all the other stuff that I needed to do. And again, links down below if you are interested in looking at any of that stuff. Stay tuned, there will be other videos where you'll th uh, see the 3DXR workshop uh, appearing because while I was there, we were actually uh, shooting some other footage for some other videos too. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.